you want to learn how to find and identify the ghost without dying in Phasmophobia? No worries. I got you. I'm going to try to persuade you to start with the video camera. Do not use the flashlight. You can use the flashlight. It's really up to you, but I really want to try to get on to using the video camera as a flashlight because looking for ghost orbs is fantastic. Hopefully we get one. We're going to other items. This is what I've been testing lately. If you want to try it out yourself, see if you like it. So the breaker is obviously on because I'm playing on amateur, but the ghost room, you know, is sort of, it's got to have time to cool down. I'll go ahead and throw the thermometer in there. So that way it's going to already be the house temperature by the time we're kind of ready to use it, depending on the path that you want to go. I didn't even open the door. Now I did change some settings as you see here. I don't have a setup timer. I also increased my sanity drain speed because I want to try to get to hunting range to show you how do you can survive hunts as well. If we start with EMF reader, UV, and the video camera. Okay, 11 ghosts have orbs as a piece of evidence, if I'm not mistaken, almost half. And it just makes it so helpful. Look at that. Look at that. You see what I mean? Right away, we saw the ghost orbs here in the living room. When you see the ghost orbs, it's one of the few pieces of evidence you know that's the ghost room. Let's see. It just touched the door. Which door did it touch? You? Which door did it touch? Down here? Uh, man. This thing is killing me. Are you in here? Did you touch one of these doors? It did touch a door. I'm not sure which door it touched, though. It's the weird thing. But either way, now we can turn on the lights. You do want to wait to kind of turn on the lights until you have found the orbs or not. I'll just go ahead and close this. So maybe... I'm not sure which door it touched, because there's no way it did it in here. Okay, either way, we know that the ghost room is in the living room, based on the fact that we saw orbs. Now, with orbs, you do have to be careful, because it could be a mimic. So mimics will always have fake ghost orbs. Do not get mimicked. It will happen, but we'll just ignore that fact. All right, so now we can start setting things up in here. After we have those three, again, you want to get with kind of a set routine. If we wanted to here, now that we have this here, which I want to show you kind of exactly what I mean. So it's really taken itself up. And as you see, it, now it has the immediate drop. So it may not have that originally. but we'll, So we'll go ahead and just set that there. Because you want to kind of keep an eye on it. Thermometer is one of the first things you want to set down and just sort of forget about it. Because it's going to take some time for the ghost room to get to that freezing point. It can take upwards of up to 10 minutes. I'm not even going to lie. It's it's very frustrating. Very frustrating. See, we found the ghost room. We got one piece of evidence so far. It's about 90% sanity. And I've increased my sanity drain speed. Turning on the house lights like we did is another great way to try to save your sanity. So after I always... So I always like to start with the video camera, the UV, and the EMF reader. Hopefully by that point we find the ghost room. If not, we'll try the thermometer and walk around with that. Always my first trip back I'm taking a uh, ghost riding book and dots because this can take some time to set up as well now dots are just very annoying especially the tier one dots we can kind of see what we get now for spirit box we do want to make sure that this is dark and we can start asking questions are you here all right so we do have spirit box. Now you do again have to be careful because spirit box can be a mimic. I like to wait to hold off on getting ghost orbs to marking it in the book because it could be fake, you know, it could be fake. So do have, do have dots. Now, if you just heard that, it did just throw something. Uh, it's not going to be EMF five. It's kind of all that we're looking for. Is it EMF 5 or not? It is not. I wouldn't worry too much about the numbers. You just want to make sure it doesn't spike all the way up to 5. Otherwise, you'll drive yourself crazy with like, wait, what, what if it's like a 3.5? Is that a 4? Is that a 3.9? Like, it, it doesn't matter is, is essentially the gist of it. You just want to know if it's a 5 or not. Uh, now we kind of have to hope that it does touch another door or tap on the window to get UV. When you get up in level, you can use salt, but we don't have salt yet to really test for that. Um, I don't know if I like the dots right there. I don't know how good it's going to look. 
I really hate dots. I really hate the tier one dots. They're just absolute trash. Is that good? Is that not good? I don't know. One thing to keep in mind though, while we are doing this, is if the ghosts hunt, where do I want to go? And I'm gonna tell you my favorite spot of all here in Tanglewood is going to be in, uh, in the nursery. In the nursery. So I love this spot. Now, this is this is a hiding spot. This one here is not like a guaranteed hiding, uh, like a guaranteed safe spot. But I have never had the ghost come get me here, and it's always available. So even if this, if you're playing on a hard harder difficulty, and this hiding spot is taken, you could always try to hide here. It's worked for me. I'm if you die, I'm not gonna take credit for that. Just because it's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be a hiding spot guaranteed, but seems to work pretty well and now it's just kind of a waiting game here right like you want to double check the thermometer at times all right we're not quite there in freezing you can just set it forget it and hold this stuff double check and it's just kind of a waiting game which is you know no fun now you can go try to find the bone if you wanted to but let's see we got to see if we can see the dots we can see if it wants to write in the book. Just messed with the potato. That's pretty far roam. What are our options? The orbs. It could be a mare. And uh, so I know mares will roam away from the light. Okay, it did just tap on the window. And I do not see any ghost or or a uh, UV. So you might not you might not be used to hearing a tap. Hopefully you could you could hear the tap. That's kind of enough for me to want to rule out UV, which none of these can be UV anyways, which means it's also not gonna be a mimic. So the only thing you really have to be aware of is an obake has a chance to not leave fingerprints, but obake is not an option for us. So if you know a ghost tapped on a window, touched a door, like you saw the physically saw the door move. Or confirmed it with an EMF reader and you don't see fingerprints, you can go ahead and mark off ultraviolet. Like, that is a safe thing to do. Mare would be ghost riding, though, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, mares are spooky. You want to know why they're spooky? Because if you actually go into my statistics, mares have killed me more than any other ghost. Fun fact. So I'm kind of scared. I'm kind of scared. Not quite to freezing it. And as you see, it just slowly goes down over time. And it can just take time. I think the evidence that we have, it could be dots for a yokai. Freezing would be Onryo. So it can't be EMF5. So we're just waiting for these now. Dots, ghost riding, or freezing temps. And there's, there's like nothing you can really do with either of these. Now we could like take out the items like if we wanted to take this out take this out take this out and just like throw them over here in hopes that the ghost will choose to interact with the book over like everything else uh is there anything else that we can take to try to prevent the ghost from interacting with things you know, just trying to throw. So therefore, it's more likely to interact with the book. And I mean, if you wanted to, you could also like you know turn turn off the light and stay here and see if you see dots. If you were worried about the sanity, but again, I know that if the ghost starts hunting, we're going to run to the nursery. You always want to keep a hiding spot in mind for this. Uh, if you were not happy with the placement as well, like you can change the dots up. Like if we wanted it here, if we thought maybe the ghost is roaming a lot, or if you wanted it more like on this side, to see if we could see anything. It's very annoying. I definitely recommend getting two dots whenever you can, just to get wider coverage because it makes it a lot easier. But tier one dots are annoying. That I can absolutely agree with you on. So, 
it did just touch this door. We don't have UV, so we, we can confirm. I mean, you know, if you wanted to double check it, you know, you could. We know it's not going to be EMF5, but there it is. If the ghost is over here, you can also try moving the book, you know. Hey, you want to be over here? You want to write in the book over here? Uh, if you were playing with, like, the ghost roaming, you could, you know, check to make sure we still have orbs, which we do still have orbs, so we know that the ghost room is still right here. And we have freezing, see? Which, it's just, you're just, like, wasting time. That That's it. So, it's just a waiting game. So we got freezing, so we know that the ghost is an on Rio. Now, if you wanted extra money, you know, you could go around and look for the bone. Taking a picture of it also helps, but look. And I have my sanity train up to 200%. We still got the 70%. Like, the ghost would not have even hunted us. Hopefully after this, I have convinced you. Please start with the video camera. When you see orbs like that right away, it makes it so much easier. And it takes a lot of the Welcome guests back. work out. Alright, right, so uh, we're going to do Bleasdale now. Again, start with the video camera, right? That's what you all are going to be doing. I'm going to go ahead and drop the thermometer in there like I did last time. Playing with the same setting, so it's like an amateur plus type kind of thing just because I do want to try to get hunted. We're playing Bleasdale. Bit of a bit of a larger larger map. About to have a makeover in the future, so play it while you can. Enjoy it. But to go along with that, now the reason why I also start with the EMF reader, in case I didn't make it clear, is because if you hear something being thrown or some kind of interaction, you can verify it with the EMF reader. If you don't have ghost orbs, it's a good way to tell the area the ghost is gonna be. And as well if you hear a door touch you can check with the glow stick to see if you have fingerprints. That's why I, I start with these items, because that's going to help me pinpoint the ghost room faster, because starting with a book or a dots is, is really not helpful, because you have to find the ghost room first, and I think these are the better items at finding the ghost room. Uh, and also, let me know who you're liking these videos. I know a lot of you like to know my thought process on things and why I do things, and decided to do some of this, and I can add more items in the future as well. Uh, so you can see what I would do if I had more items unlocked. So again, we're just gonna we're just gonna go around. I would recommend closing doors as you are checking. Uh, whenever we go back around. So right now we're just looking for ghost orbs. Right? We're just looking for ghost orbs. If we see anything, if we hear anything. No, I don't see any orbs here. And open this. Any orbs here in this bathroom? No, don't forget. You can also use this, you know, look for the bone as well. Now, it is tough on this little small screen to find things like a small bone or something. Uh, but all that secondary to the fact, if you can find the ghost room, identify the ghost, and then survive, you're going to earn a lot of money and a lot of levels that way. Like, surviving is, like, the biggest, biggest key with this. So I'm hoping that we'll get our sanity down so I can show you how to get away during hunts. Is it snowing? I thought I saw an orb there, but I don't think so. And then as we clear this, again, you can't really see orbs with lights on, but as you search the main areas, if you see there's no orbs, I would recommend go ahead and turning on the light to preserve your sanity. Um, unless you're crazy like me, it's like, I just want my sanity straight drained. But, uh, so, like, this will be a good hallway to have the light on. So, what I'll do first is just check. Do we see any orbs? It does not look like it. So, I will go ahead and turn on this light before checking the other rooms. Just for that very reason. So, that way we can try to save some sanity that way. That's how I recommend playing with that. And then, check this bathroom. We're checking for orbs. If we don't have orbs, or if we don't see, like, any disturbed items in here we can come back around later with the thermometer and then check that way so don't get too discouraged and as you see look at that as soon as we walk in orbs please start with the video camera it makes life so much easier it makes life so much easier and just through that so because it threw that it's probably not going to be a shade but it can't be a shade with orbs anyways but always good things to think about so uh we don't know if it touched anything yet so we'll just kind of leave it 
leave it at that and we'll go get the rest of our stuff and it turned off the breaker so a good thing now to know with this if the ghost turned off a breaker what am i doing evidence it can't be a gen can't be a gen again i'm still hesitant to mark in the book where uh the orbs I'm trying to think about what i I did is the is the breaker upstairs or in the attic because I didn't see it downstairs. Well, it wasn't in the back room. I do know that. Uh, it's not on that side. It might be right beside the front door, which is good. If so, is it in here? No. Nope. So it's probably beside the front door. Okay. I wanted to make sure while I was up here. And if you get into a situation like that, it is kind of, kind of hard to be without a flashlight if you're, if you're not used to it, but let's see what I think I will do is just, but again, you can also use the glow stick and I definitely recommend the glow stick to get away during hunts, which hopefully we get hunted and I can show you sort of how to get away. I know the breaker locations by heart. If you knew that the breaker went out and you did not know the location by heart, it is on a map in the truck. It is on a map in the truck. Uh, right there. So we would know that it would be under the stairs. But I know there's only three locations the breaker can be on this on this map. So, All right. Uh, I do want the, the spirit box at some point. If I didn't have the glow stick, if the breaker was turned on, I would have just grabbed the spirit box there. But getting into a routine with the same items each time is going to help you uh, just do these investigations smoother. Right? Like like I said, once I find the ghost room, I always take in a book and a dots. Because it can take uh, some time to get at times. So it just makes it a bit easier. Alright, so we'll try that. Now, since we know that it touched this door and we do not see fingerprints, I do need to double check for EMF5 with that. It did it twice, and that's kind of good to test for an Obake because if it's orbs, it could be an Obake. Um, but I'm willing to rule out UV based on that. So we still want to kind of double check because it could still be it, but... Uh, here, it's getting closer to freezing, not quite freezing yet, but we'll go back down and we will get a spirit box and we'll go ahead and grab the flashlight. Why not? And it'll also help on the activity chart to look for EMF five. If you see a five spike, I do have a video going more in depth on that, but it doesn't look like it's going to be EMF-5 so far. Again, I would always verify everything, but you learn tricks along the way. So as we head back up, we do have ghost riding. Are you here? From behind, please. From behind. All right. Please do not get me from behind. I would not appreciate it at all. We have a mare this time. So I was thinking the last game we might have a mare. But a, a good thing there. This is a nice small room, which is really good for a spirit box because you don't really have to worry. You know the ghost is going to be somewhere within, like, the radius of it, right? Well, another thing, though, we saw it interact with the toilet paper, so we knew that we could that we could go. Now, with it being a mare, a mare can hunt you starting at 60% sanity in the dark. So I want to show you what it would look like. I know that I like a hiding spot here. If it chooses to hunt behind here. You want to make sure you have no electronics on. We're getting close to hunting range, so I think I'll just go ahead and, and get hunted and tell you sort of what to look for, right? Like we're in here. We're like, huh, what more do I want to do? I'm just sort of waiting. 
and I'll show you sort of what, what to look for because essentially you want to see does the equipment start malfunctioning and do you hear the ghost. Now when hunts start it can sound a lot like ghost events so sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry if you're not sure if you're like oh my god am I going to get hunted this is just a ghost event just be safe and run away to your hiding spot. So there's also hiding spots in, uh, in closets, lockers, behind tall things. I, I actually, one of my favorite hiding spots in here is it's like right here, but we can't hide there because this is the ghost room. Now, what? another thing I want you to keep in mind is I have my back to the exit so I can get away quickly, right? Like if I was all the way on the other side of this room with my back against the wall and it chooses to start hunting, I got to run all the way through and then around and down the stairs, wasting time, right? It's wasting time doing that and you could get caught. So that's why you want to stand right here. Like if we had a camera, we're looking for it. That's there. See, I, he I heard it. It was not a ghost event. Or it was a ghost event, not a hunt. Because the door didn't close. But that's where I was like, sometimes it's easier to be safe than sorry. You hear that? Just run to your hunting spot. I thought it was kind of strange that it was out. But the ghost should be hunting us soon because we are you know, losing sanity. It should be in hunting range because we were just about there. Because mares are early hunters. So it's... So, see there, equipment malfunctioning. We hear the sound. Front door is now closed, and we're running away. And it's all the way up there, so we should be safe. All we got to do is come here. Make sure all the electronics are off. It's why I recommend holding a glow stick to get away to see in case it was completely dark. You would know where to go. The ghost will not find you here. And the hunt's already over. Because on amateur, the hunts do not last long. I don't even know if that ghost ever made it downstairs. Click or tap the screen now to look at more beginner's guides on how to easily find and identify the ghost. Thank you so much to all the channel members. Thank you for the extra support. Thank you everybody for watching. Happy hunting, and uh, I'll see you over there with some more investigations.